WPEG Power 98, Charlotte's number one for blazing hip hop and R&B. I'm Yasmin Young from No Limit Larry and the Morning Madhouse. And the star phone is ringing. You saw her on Basketball Wives. The ladies had ganged up on her and we didn't get the full story. So I wanted to get her on the line and hear her side of exactly what happened. Monet, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to you, Yasmin, in North Carolina. What's going on? I'm so in love from New York. <laughs> let, let, let's get right into it. Let's talk about it. All of the ladies confronted you on Basketball Wives, even though it was Tasha and you that had an issue. Somehow they all got involved into this. Talk to me about what the issue was, because I, I never got a clear picture of what she was actually accusing you of and and what happened. Uh, well, basically, she was accusing me of having an affair with, you know, her, I guess, you know, I mean, there's been so much blogs and stuff reporting that they, she's the ex-wife and then, you know, she's the wife. So I'm not sure who Tasha Marbury is. You know, she's married to him or she was, that's, that's not my concern. But this lady had, um, concocted this whole and fabricated this storyline about me and Stefan, and it was just, we were cool at one point. Like, we met on Twitter, and, you know, we, we were texting and we were emailing. I'm not going to deny that, but there's nothing after that. So for, you know, this lady to be saying I had a, a you know, I I claimed to have had sex with him or, no, that never went down. So I'm not understanding why she wanted to meet me. Um out of all the women that, you know, he's he's messed around with and the other mistresses or whatever case may be, I was the one that she took, like, a vengeance out on. And it was just, like, nonstop. This has been going on for two years, and it just now entered the media because it was just back and forth bickering and, you know, between... it's You know, the entertainment industry is a very small industry. Her friends uh, and my friends, like, they're all in a mix. So whatever he says, she says, she does, it gets back to me, you know, regardless of whose wife you may be or whatever, like, it's it's very small, you know? The groups are very small. So, um, you know, she took it upon herself to go on this show. Like, he didn't even know, Stefan did not know that she signed up to this show. And she mentioned that in one of her, um, in one of, I guess, on Bossip or whatever the case is she's doing. But it, it's just, I think this lady wanted attention because nobody even knew that, that Stefan was married to Tasha Marbury. Like, we've seen him in, in the media with all types of chicks. Like, he's ran through, like, the boroughs and the tri-state with different women. So it, it just, like, it shocked the world. It shocked me. And for this lady to, like, you know, um, target me as someone who was ruining her marriage or, or somebody who was dangerous... It was kind of disrespectful. It was very disrespectful. You know? we, we saw in the episode where she was talking about the chef, Evelyn, had brought that up. Do you think that they brought you on the show to help the ratings? Because aside from the chef situation, Tasha didn't have a lot of, I would say, interesting things going on in her storyline. I do I do believe that. I do believe so. I, I feel like this. Without Monet Michon, Stefan Marbury, or Elvin Lozada, like Tasha Marbury is a fart in the wind. She has no storyline. She's a nobody. No one knew of her before the show. No one knows her now or after the show, and no one cares. So, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, like, this lady brought me, I, like, I was doing my own thing, like, you know, building my resume up from the late 90s, you know, off of what I was doing. But this lady is like a housewife, hasn't really, you know, made a name for herself outside of Stefan Marbury. And then she comes on here, she embarrasses herself, talks about seven businesses that were all down the drain. They they you know, they're no longer <laughs> in, in in service or, or you know, she's just not reputable and it's bad business. Like I, I really feel like, you know, she tried to drag my name out and defame me and assassinate my character. Uh as far like as far as the other ladies go, um I guess, you know, she knew Evelyn for how long or whatever many years. And Evelyn doesn't, no longer talks to her or Tammy. Like, Evelyn, 
doesn't see Tammy as someone like she wants to be friends with and but she wishes her well. But as far as Tasha goes, she she doesn't you know, she's been in the media a lot, like um going head to head with, you know, Tasha Marbury or whatever the case is. But that's neither here there or any of my business. Well um, we saw you walk out of the restaurant after they, you know, all sat down and had the talk with you. What happened after that? Well, when I came there, um I sat down and, and, you know, I introduced myself to all the ladies. And then we just went back and forth. It was just nonstop bickering and arguing. At one point, like, you know, a fight was going to break out. It was it was about to go down. Uh, I, I brought my police report. Like, I brought the evidence. You know, as far as, like, evidence for Stefan or trying to, like, sit in the, around a group of ladies and blast him and put him on blast, no, I was not there for him. That was not my intentions to go on the show and put this man on blast. My intentions was to meet this demon who had put me in the media, who was telling people I was stalking her and her husband and, and, you know, had a fake police report out on me talking about there was a restraining order, which in, in, in return, I had to go file my police report, um, February 3rd, like January 31st, it went to TMZ in the media that she had put a, a filed a police, um, like a restraining order with the Harrison, and um pd so february 1st february 2nd you know i i let it i was like okay if it dies down i i'm not gonna worry about it whatever the case is she was reaching for me this kept on going to different blogs and it was it was traveling so by the third day i'm like uh uh-uh. i went to the nypd I brought all the articles and all the facts and all the things that, you know, because she's left messages on my phone. Like, she's contacted my friends through email and things like that, calling them looking for me. So I'm like, all right, well, what can y'all do about this lady? Because here's here's this woman that I've never interact, I've never met her prior to the show. But she knows so much about me, and while I'm talking to Stefan, and as far as like my my tweets and what I text him, or she knows all of this. So this is kind of scary, <laughs> you know, it's for me. Not that I can't take her on, but now it's got to a level where, all right, you're bringing law enforcement in, and 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 offer something that I I don't even know of. So I, when I went to the NYPD. Uh, they checked everything out. They called Harrison Police Station. When they called them and they contacted them with, you know, my my stage name, well, Monet Michonne. Mon- Monet is my middle name. Michonne is my family name, which I also use as a stage name. And then I have my birth given name, you, you know? Mm-hmm. So they you, they went in there and gave them both, you know, my, my stage and Sonala or whatever, you know, and then my real name. They called Harrison Police um, Station. Harrison didn't know... Any house in New York didn't know anything about the situation. So then we're stumped because I, I sat in the police station for like three hours, you know, with detectives and everything. So we're stumped. They're like, you're not in the system. They don't have any report on you. So then that's when the detectives take me upstairs and they're trying to figure out, well, did you, did, what, did, what happened with you and Stefan? Did you sleep? What's going on? I was like, I have no clue right now why this lady is targeting me and hating me so much. Yeah, you know. So in return, they gave me my police report. I send it to TMZ. Like, look, this is who I am. This lady's harassing me. Right. <laughs> let's 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 please rectify the situation, clarify this uh, to the media and about you know, because I've never been through this in my life. Like, this is the first time that anyone has ever you know. I mean, I've been called worse, <laughs> like by friends and family, like you know. But that this is crazy. This is my name, my brand. And this lady, you know, off of whatever she was going through, and we were talking about Tasha Marbury, she just sat there and was just trying to go after everybody, like, you know, with a vengeance, like a scorned woman. And it was crazy. It was really crazy to me. So have you talked to her at all since Never. February? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. And have I, you talked to I... Stefan since February? No. Okay, so no- nothing else has happened really from, you know, we're obviously catching up because we just recently saw the episode where all of this happened, yeah. but this happened a while. I mean, all they all they did was show my bloopers. Like, even me walking out the restaurant, there were two doors in that restaurant. So there was the door that I came in, and then there was behind Shawnee O'Neal another door. So after, it was just like, at one point, I was just, like, ready to get the hell out of there because it was just like, all right, all y'all ladies are going to side with this woman because, first of all, she's a cast member, and you're going to try to make me look 
whatever, because y'all were all married at one point and y'all feel some some way about an outsider coming in. But um, regardless of anything, I think Tammy was the most disrespectful on there. Like, I, I really do feel like Evelyn even addressed my name. You know, Tasha said my name on the show, but Tammy kept saying, well, this lady wants attention and, you know, she's a stalker. And, well, who you know, contacted whom? Did they contact you or did you contact the show? No, uh, Kim, uh, I'm going to tell you the, the people. Stephanie Emmons is, is one of the producers there, and then Kendall Elrod, who is also the owner um, and of Basketball Wise, I guess one of the, the head honchos over there at Shea Media. They contacted me, and Stephanie is like, well, you've made it. Like, And I'm like, who is this? You know, She's like, we're contacting you for Basketball Wise. And I'm like, I'm thinking... This is somebody doing a prank on me, and Tasha is trying to find out where I live. She's like, "Oh, what's your address? You know, da da da. We got to get you out." This is when they're going to London. Okay. I was supposed to fly out to London, but because I didn't renew my passport at the time, they called me Monday, and they were filming from Monday to Thursday in London. I couldn't get my passport to Wednesday. It's an eight-hour flight, and it makes sense for them to, you know, rush that and book me, and then. You know, they were only going to film for, like, a couple hours. It just didn't make sense to fly me out to London and pay, like, a $1,000 flight to go out there. So after that, um, they they made room and they, they said, well, we're going to be doing another couple of days in shooting in L.A. Can you come out to L.A.? I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? Does Tasha know about this? But, yeah, she's the one that got us to invite you. She wants to meet you. And besides, she's been talking a lot of crap about you filming this whole season. So this was weird to me that somebody, you know, who's claiming that I'm a stalker, who's 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 saying all this, but wants to meet me and put me on the show. And you know? that that is a very good point because if you really truly fear someone and believe that they're a stalker, they're dangerous, you know, why would you want to meet them at all? It doesn't matter if there's other people around or not, you know, what's the point? Especially Correct. if, you know, you're trying to get away from them. So I agree with you on that part. That doesn't make yes. any sense. Mhm. So this whole, this whole, like I said, this lady to me is a weirdo, and <laughs> you know, and all of this was for attention, or I don't know what was going on inside of her house or her mind or her, you know, her cheerleading squad that her people's or her publicist was saying, because it's so funny how everything has been leaked out and 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 it's been traced back to her, like as far as you know leaking out the chef information and what, you know, when she wanted her money and the cars and, you know, they, they, it, it's just ridiculous. And then there's been, um, I guess, side stories about her saying, stating that she's not enough for him because Stefan is bisexual. So there's stories going out, you know, being traced back to this lady leaking it. She's leaked me to TMZ, TMZ and then she tried to twist it on the show, on Basketball Wise, saying I was the one hitting up TMZ. I was the one hitting up all her friends. Uh, Evelyn, Shawnee, last time I checked, Tammy, Susie, all of them have open lines of communication. Anyone can follow these people on Twitter or Facebook or fan page or whatever the case is. Shawnee O'Neal opened this show in 2010, so, like, I'm not following any private people. Like, right. <laughs> you understand? Right. So They're all public figures. Well, yeah, Monet, all public figures. I, I know that you are also a hip hop artist, so I want to give you an opportunity to talk about what it is that you're doing, you know, outside of this whole situation. Okay, outside of this situation, I'm working on my music projects and um, just just singles to be dropping, you know, very soon. Um, like I'm an architect of music and culture. Like social engineering creators are the real game changers. And you know, I feel like when you change the game, you change the world. And as far as anything goes, the generation follows the music now, you know, it, it, whatever moves them and whatever inspires them as far as real emotion, like that's what I'm trying to do. I'm very authentic. Like I believe in authenticity. I believe in being genuine and being real and, and honest with my fans. So, you know, for this lady to put me on a different, like this lady took me, and put me on a higher platform than what she was trying to do. And she was trying to embarrass me, but it backfired. Um, other than that, I I started, I got my first break on MTV Direct Effects. It was a show called, a dance show called Direct Effects in the early 2000s um, with KK Holiday and Funk Master Flex and also DJ Clue. From there, I did a Matt Cosmetics campaign um, with Richard Law and Nadine Luke. 
and that was in UK and um, United States. In Mac stores at the time, there's a limited edition. It's called the Mac Deck of Cards, House of Cards, and it was body art. And we raised millions, like uh, millions, for the AIDS Foundation. And from there, in the late um, 2000s, they turned it into a book, which you can find it online right now, the Mac um, deck of cards uh, in Barnes & Nobles, barnesandnobles.com, eBay, Amazon. You can find the house deck of cards because if you play spades or whatever you do, they have the limited edition Mac um, deck of cards on eBay and Amazon. Uh, I also worked on, I work on films. I, I produce independent films and, and distribution deals for independent films. I worked on a film um, with John Zhao. It's called Alexandria Leaving, which, you know, we're trying to get distribution for theaters or Netflix or whatever. And we're in, and we're in meetings and discussions with that. I also produced the soundtrack um, and music for that movie. Um, you could catch that on, at johnzhao.com, Alexandria Leaving, um, if you want to know more about the trailer and everything like that. Um, and give out your social media so people can follow you on Twitter or on Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah. Twitter, Twitter. You can find my name is Sean at Twitter, at my name is Sean, M-O-N-E-T-M-E-R-C-H-A-N-D, uh, I-G, Instagram, with, it is Queen, same thing, my name is Sean, Queen, M-O-N-E-T-M-E-R-C-H-A-N-D. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, my name is Sean. You could, you know, go to YouTube to see my music and, and get the uh I did interviews about the situation prior to all of this happening, like just giving people heads up of this lady was really trying to defame me and assassinate my character. Uh, SoundCloud.com, my name is Sean, Reverb Nation, and IMDB, my name is Sean, um, and just Google me, M-O-N-E-T-M-E-R-C-H-A-N-D, and the music is on its way. Like, I just can't wait. Um, A new video for YouTube, I was just in the studio with um, Brucey Blige, Mary J. Blige's brother, and he's also helping me produce my project. So shout out to Brucey B. Blige and um, everybody over there in Jersey right now. <laughs> well, Monet, thank you for sharing mm-hmm. your side of the story because we know that there are three sides of the story, you know, yes. yours, hers, and the truth. So yes. I definitely appreciate you taking out the time to let everybody know what happened from your perspective and, and give us a little bit more than we actually got on the show. And everyone, make sure that you are listening out for her music that's coming out and following her on all of her social yes. media. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I thank you for this opportunity, and I just want to leave this on that side note. You see that after all of this she's tried to do, she's died out. There's no more talking about who Daja Marbury is. That's why I said no one knew her, nobody cares now, and nobody will ever care. But, you know, I, I bless Daphne and everything. He's supposed to be coming out with his sneaker line soon. So I, I don't hate him, but at the end of the day, you know, I feel like they were together on this so i leave both of that alone and just god bless both of them That's all it. right well thank you monet i appreciate okay. it wpeg power 98 charlotte's number one for blazing hip-hop and r&b thank you